you so much for having us at your home in Palo Alto today, Mr. and Mrs. Sano. How many children and grandchildren do you have? We have two children, one boy and one girl. And uh, we have two, it's two grandchildren. Two grandchildren? One, one boy and one girl. So nice. Do they visit here often? Yes, they all live in Palo Alto, so we get together for occasions. Oh, it's wonderful, really very nice. Wonderful. Yes. Uh, would you tell me your birthday and the current age, Peter? Yes, uh, I was born in, 19, in June 9, 1924, and so I'm 80 years old. I was 80 years old last June. And how many years have you been married, Minako? 56 years. 56 years, and you're from Japan, right? I am from Tokyo. Peter, how many years have you been retired? I retired from work uh, last year. What were you doing? And I was a draftsman and I was doing architectural drawing. I was working for a company, but I retired from that company pro probably 20 years ago. And then I, I, and I had my own little business and I was drawing for a lot of contractors. Did you also do the gardening structure? You have a beautiful Japanese garden. Well, I, I do. It's getting harder to do now. What have you been enjoying doing since retirement? Well, since I've retired, I've been reading. I, I have over a hundred books on the subject of Japanese uh, prisoners in Siberia. And there are just about the, all of them are written in Japanese, and I have a hard time reading Japanese. But uh, so I spent a lot of time reading. That's what I'm doing now. I, I don't know if I'll be able to read all the books. Uh, Minako-san, do you do something together with him? We, we go out and walk uh -huh. to do some exercise. Uh -huh. What I enjoy is to have a get together with the family because everybody in, in this family lives in Palo Alto. I see, and I understand you're quite a musician. Well, <laughs> I like music, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Today, you are going to share your valuable life's experiences with us regarding the period while you were interned in Siberia. Okay. I yeah. learned so much about it from your book, Thousand Days in Siberia, that you wrote. Actually, this was translated into Japanese. This was published in 1997, and two years later, Mrs. Sano, Minako Sano, translated it into Japanese, so it's available in both languages. This book is such a moving book, and it's written with lots of humor and insight. Even though uh, you are in such a dangerous and in cruel environment, your illustrations add a lot, too. It's here. In fact, reading your book will tell everybody a lot more things in detail. Thank you. Your case was so unique because you were there as a Japanese, but you were really born as an American. Yes, uh, when I was 15 years old, I went to Japan and took out Japanese citizenship because it was necessary when I was being adopted. And because I had Japanese citizenship, I was at age 20, I was drafted into the Japanese uh, military. However, one thing, in Siberia that I uh, would like to mention is the fact that as soon as we arrived in Siberia, uh, we had to fill out our personal history. For some reason, the group leader told me, hey, uh, Suzuki, don't write the fact that you were born in the United States. Just make a note there that you were born in Japan and had just lived all your life in Japan. And don't mention that you were born in the United States. And I didn't know what the, why he said that, but that stuck with me. And I hope much many years later, I found out that that was a wise thing to do because I've read in other people's experience when they found out that the prisoner was a, a Nisei or somebody Japanese American born in the United States. They had a very difficult time uh, when the Russians found out about this. To, to, uh, to Japan and decided to return to the United States. The U.S. government started checking up on me and of course right away they 
found out that I was a prisoner in Siberia. And one of the first questions that the, uh, they asked me was, how come you were able to come back from Siberia earlier than when the majority came back? And I told them, well, I was a patient and I had malaria, so they sent me back. And he says, well, that might be true, but I think it, there's another reason. And I said, I don't, I don't understand what you're saying. And he said, well, here's what happened. The Russians found out you were uh, born in the United States, therefore you must know English. So they pulled you out and told you, we'll send you back early, but here, here's your part of the bargain. When you go back to Japan, you work for the occupation, and uh, when you go out and talk to the Japanese people, whatever the, the, what the Americans are doing in Japan are saying what kind of government the United States has, and we're supposed to make you a democratic country. Well, you just twist that all around and make it somehow uh, sneak in the fact that the United States is completely wrong and the real good government is what the Soviet Union has. He said, that's the deal uh, you made with the Russians. You get sent back early, but you have to work for them. Isn't that the reason why you were, uh, you were able to come back early? And I says, no, that's, nothing like that happened. And he said, well, there was a guy just like you from Texas and uh, we finally had to give a lie detector test on him and every time he failed. And, and so I said, well, I'm willing to take the test too if you, want, if you can't believe me. And, and that subject was dropped after that. You were miraculously um, able to make it back to Japan and went back to your uncle and auntie's home in Japan. Um, however, you made a decision to permanently go back to the Sano family in California and reobtain the American citizenship. Do you think you made a right decision? I think it was a right decision that I made, although I never talked about that with my uh, parents or with my Japanese uh, parents either uh, after leaving them. I, I just never brought the subject up like that. The Sano family was split into two sides when the World War II began because you were there uh, in Japan at that time. As a result, the same family experienced two different kinds of imprisonment. Your family was put into Japanese internment camp until the end of the war and you were taken to Siberian labor camps by Stalin's National Order 9898 after the World War II ended. Although two experiences happened in different ways, one in the East and one in the West, there is a common structure because innocent people were deprived of their freedom under the war hysteria. First, can we talk about the internment experience of the Sano family in the U.S.? Yes, thank you. When Franklin Roosevelt's Executive Order 9066 was issued on February 19, 1942, after the Pearl Harbor attack, over 127,000 United States citizens of Japanese ancestry were imprisoned into 10 relocation camps in remote areas. Where was your family sent? Family was uh, taken to camp at different times. As soon as that executive order was issued, the FBI came to my father's place and took my father to camp. And he was taken to not one of the 10 camps. It was a camp in North Dakota. I think they had two of those camps, one in North Dakota and one in Texas. That's where they, they took the prisoners and my father was taken to North Dakota. And the rest of the family were taken to, or four months later, they were taken to Poston, Arizona, to a camp there. What type of experiences did they have in the camp? Well, I, I think it was a rough time. 
especially if I think the, the people who suffered the most were the Issei's or the first generation ja Japanese who suffered more than, uh, for instance, like in my siblings were young and it was uh, in some ways it was a time when they, they were with friends every day and uh, but I'm sure it was difficult for them. Like my older brother also went to camp and I don't think he had, he had dinner t t with the family too often. He would be together with his friends. So I, I think those were the difficult time and I, th those who suffered the most, I am sure, were the, the, the parents or the Issei's. Did the Sano family back in California know that you were put into harsh labor in Siberia? It was way after the war had ended that uh, uh, they found out about that. And that was when, when my brother went to Japan and visited uh, my Japanese family. At that time, they were told that uh, that I was sent to Manchuria and therefore I must be in Siberia. So it, it, it was at that time I think they found out that, uh, that I, I was a, a prisoner in Siberia. How was your reuniting with your family in the United States when you finally came home safely? Well, as a young man I guess I wasn't that uh, emotional about it, but I'm sure my parents were happy to see me back in Japan because I heard much later from my older brother how they uh, suffered when they sent me to Japan and, and uh, they, they had a difficult time and were happy. so therefore they must have been very happy to see me back again. That was very nice. Thank you very much for all your stories for this part. You.